Welcome to my review of the Casio F201WA. This uh, Casio model was released in August of 2009. Um, this is the typical uh, low budget packaging that the budget conscious Casio watches come in. You've got a trilingual manual, uh, English, French, and Spanish. It's for module 3238. The old module apparently was 3196, so the module's been updated, probably to extend the full auto calendar to the year 2099. It comes with a uh, one-year warranty card, limited warranty. Um, yeah, the watch is in a little baggy. So it advertises, as you can see, that it has a 10-year battery. One one hundredth of a second stopwatch, dual time, 10 year battery, water resistant. There's the model number and the module number on the bottom. So this is the correct stand that goes with the watch. This retails for $14.95, but um, typically at Walmart, Amazon, eBay, etc., it'll cost you $10.35. Well, actually, this one, um, I bought this one by accident. It turns out that um, you may notice it has like a, a gold coloration, which uh, shines up through the edge of the crystal. I don't want to create envy and jealousy. Um, you know, I don't want to have oil princes from Dubai calling me up and music moguls and rappers and what have you but um, just just to show <clears throat> the luxurious shameless uh, wealth with which I daily operate I accidentally purchased the gold version instead of the regular black version and uh, I'm having trouble sleeping at night actually because you know just the fact that I can just do this by carelessly spend a whole entire 12 additional cents without even giving it a second thought. Just think how many um, starving children in other countries like, well, Ethiopia, or actually more accurately here in the USA, could, could be fed for a whole, like, half a minute at least on that amount of money. Well, anyway, I'm struggling to get past that. Uh, the reason I bought this is because I was trying to figure out if there were any uh, affordable Casio wristwatches. I'm talking about the $10 to $15 type where you had a countdown timer because most of the affordable, really super low budget 10 to $15 Casio watches um, do not have a countdown timer, mysteriously. And this was the only one that I could find in that price range. So let's just uh, go through the main features. Uh, of course, as we already mentioned, it has 10 year battery, it's water resistant, which basically means it's splash resistant and um, rain resistant. It should never be submerged. It has an LED backlight, dual time, five alarms. One of them is optionally a snooze alarm. It has a 24-hour countdown timer, 24-hour stopwatch, one one hundred of a second. Hourly chime, full auto calendar until the year 2099, so it knows the leap years and automatically adds the 29th day of February. Um, and it has 12 24-hour switching. Um, and just quickly go through the modes here. There's your alarm mode, and you have five alarms. That's the hourly chime. You can turn that off and on. Um, countdown timer mode. Starts at 24 if it's set to zero. Stopwatch, one one hundredth of a second. You got start, stop, um, reset. You can do splits using the adjust button. 
keeps running in the background. And the next mode is a dual time mode. Interestingly, when you're in dual time, um, it does not show you your home time up here in this little area, which would be nice, but that doesn't happen. Um, now this does not have auto return, which some people complain about. In other words, if you switch it into timer mode, for instance, it will not automatically switch back to timekeeping on its own. And I think that's because some people, when they put their watch in dual time, they actually want to leave it there until they decide that they want to switch back. Uh, if you press and hold the mode button, it will automatically switch back to um, the home screen. But it doesn't, um, well, I should say it instantly switches back to the home screen, but does, it does not do an automatic return to the home screen from other modes. Some people might consider that a negative, others might consider it a plus. So let's talk construction. Uh, it has a resin case, uh, most people call it plastic. It has an acrylic crystal, which will scratch easily, uh, depending on uh, your, your lifestyle, I guess, or your work style. It'll scratch and may get filled with scratches fairly quickly. Um, it has a four screw stainless steel case back. Uh, compared to G-Shocks, it's a thin metal case back, but uh, that's because it's not rated for a lot of underwater pressure. Uh, it's not, it can't cope with that. Um, it has large four buttons, two on each side, symmetrical. Uh, they're large plastic, very easy to press. Um, however, a lot of people complain that the watch is automatically switching between 12 and 24. What's actually happening is, happening is that when they bend their wrist back, this button, or bump into things, this button gets pressed real easily, inadvertently or unintentionally, and that causes it to switch from 12 to 24 or vice versa. Um, it has... 18 millimeter lug spacing with standard spring bars so you could put your own strap on here if you wanted to. A new strap will probably cost you as much or more than the watch itself so there's kind of no need to replace the strap. The strap is made out of polyurethane so it's pretty bacterial resistant but you should wash it regular, just, regularly just to prevent allergic reactions and also sweat can cause corrosion to the case back and stuff. The buckle is a single tang plastic. Seems to be a pretty tough plastic. Um, it has a has a it's not a spring bar. It's just a steel pin going through there. Now one thing uh, the strap keeper there is no barb on the strap to keep the strap keeper from sliding off. So the strap keeper will easily slip off of the watch like so, which can be a little bit of a nuisance. Some people feel that it looks a bit feminine and um, I kind of agree. I think because it's rectangular and it's vertically rectangular, not sideways. That gives it a bit of a feminine appearance, but you know, compared to the F91, it's about the same size. The F91 is actually a little smaller, but the F91 is square, which I think gives it a more masculine appearance. So the uh, dimensions of the watch are 41 millimeters. That would be the, the vertical height, 41 millimeters by 34 millimeters across, that'd be the width, and then it's 10.5 millimeters thick. It weighs 23.8 grams. Um, as far as the digits go, the day of week is a little bit small. The other ones are good size, kind of standard Casio size. They're not like Timex jumbo size. Uh, you know, at least some of the Timex watches have these really huge digits. Um, so if you're 
you know, over 40, you might have, this might not be the ideal watch for you. You know, if your vision's not real good, you might want one of those uh, watches with a jumbo size um, digits. It doesn't have any shock resistance. It's not a G-Shock. It just has a standard shock resistance of a digital watch, which is fairly decent. Um, the water resistance, like I mentioned before, is just, uh, according to the Casio manual, when it says water resistant or water resist, either on the front or on the case back or both, it means that it can handle splashes and rainfall uh, and washing your hands, for instance. Um, now, a lot of people say that they wore it surfing and regularly wear it surfing, and because it's water resistant, they thought that it was, you know, okay for that or whatever, but actually, no, you should not depend on it to be uh, able to cope with that. You may get away with it, you may get away with it a lot, but, you know, it's not designed for that, and it could fail. Um, the battery is a CR2025, and it should last about 10 years. To, but if you use the alarm and, and you use the backlight a lot, um, then it could be shorter. The accuracy is plus or minus 30 seconds per month, which puts it on par with the uh, F91W. So as far as comfort goes, on my wrist, the buckle is a little over to the side. Um, so for me, it's not ideal. I think if you have like six to six and a half inch wrists, it'd be great. The strap keeper, like I said, because it doesn't have a retention, I mean, if you if you wear the watch tight enough, then it probably won't move anywhere, but it doesn't have a barb on the end of the strap. So this might slip off, and then you have this flapping around, and that can be irritating. But otherwise, I don't see any comfort issues. So in regard to ease of reading the digits, if you put it side by side with the, uh, the W800H, you can see that it has kind of a darkish uh, color to the LCD background, whereas this has a more paper white look to it. And that makes a significant difference in terms of how easy it is to read the digits. Um, so even though the digits are of fairly generous size, it's not that easy to read because the LCD is cheap or something. I don't know why. Um, I mean, this watch isn't this one here, the the uh, 800H is not that much more expensive. And they both use the same backlight too, which, you know, further confuses me. I mean, if one was EL and the other one was um, LED, then I would attribute it to that. But they both have LED backlights. Um, so that means that the the illumination comes from underneath the LCD and shines up through it. Although this one looks... I don't know, the LED's not located very well or something, or it's not aligned very well. So it looks like it's above the liquid crystal rather than underneath to some extent. And let's take a look at the illumination. Um, the light button is here, of course. It is an LED backlight. It has a one and a half second afterglow. Um, if you press a button, I guess that, I think that cuts it short even shorter than the one and a half seconds, but um, you cannot get this light to stay on longer. If you press and hold the button, it will not stay on longer. It's one and a half seconds from the time that it's activated. Now, it seems pretty easy to read right now, but to the naked eye, it's very bright down here in the left hand, bottom left corner, where the LED is located. And the brightness actually causes some glare, and it kind of blinds you to the characters, you know, the digits underneath. Um, I'm not sure if that's just a bulb misalignment problem. I'm not sure if it's that way with all, every, of uh, every piece of this model that comes off the assembly line. Um, it's the same as the W800H. You can see, very similar, but this one is, is a little less bright down here in the lower left corner. That's it. If you want really good backlighting, you want to get electroluminescent, or I should say electroluminescent, 
backlighting, um, otherwise known as EL or Timex Indiglo. So let's do an operational breakdown. Um, as you can see, there are labels here on the case. However, they're not painted in, so they're virtually impossible to see or read with the naked eye. Uh, light, start, stop, over here, mode, adjust. So this is the light button. It's actually visible. I'm surprised. It's better than a micro light, but it's not as good as EL. This start stop button, you can't tell right now because there's no AM indicator and there's no 24 hour indicator, but it actually switches between uh, 12 and 24 hour mode. In the afternoon, of course, you'll notice the difference. The mode button, of course, there's alarm mode, countdown timer, stopwatch, dual time, and there's a higher pitch beep when you get back to your home screen. Uh, if you press and hold, it will automatically pop you directly back to the home screen. And the adjust button puts you into the settings mode. And you can zero out your seconds. And pressing the mode button will change what's flashing and then you can adjust that. You can only go forward. The light button works as a light. It doesn't allow you to go backwards or decrement the... so. If you press and hold, you can speed scroll. So now you can see that we're in 24 hour mode. And you do the same thing with the minutes. It has a full auto calendar from 2000 to 2099. So it will always have the correct day of the week, provided your day of the month is correct. And it will automatically add the 29th day of February. Um, and you can manually set the month, day of the month. And that's it. You don't set the day of the week if it has a full auto calendar. Yeah, so now we can see 2 p.m. versus 14.47. Now we can look at the alarm mode. It is a multifunction alarm. There are five of them. This is the hourly chime. If you press the adjust button, you hear a beep. See the word SIG down here? That indicates that the hourly chime is on. So it'll do a double beep at the top of the hour. It's always the top of the hour. It's not adjustable. Um, so let's go back to number one. This one, if you notice down here, um, it shows that the alarm is on. And if you press the adjust button again, you see SNZ, so that's the snooze option. So this is optionally a normal daily alarm or a snooze alarm. It can be either one. The other four alarms are just simple daily alarms. They do not have the snooze option. So if you press and hold the adjust button, this will allow you to change your alarm time. And they are multifunction, so you can set the month there's January. So now it'll sound at 7 a.m. every day in the month of January. Can't go backwards. Um, if you set the day of the month, now it will sound at 7 a.m. on the second of every month. And if you set both the month and the day, so for instance, this will sound at 7 a.m. on February 2nd once a year. That's how the multifunction alarm works. And if you if you hyphen them out the way they were originally, then it becomes just a standard daily alarm and it sounds every day. Um, yeah, every day at 7 a.m. Unless you change the time to something else. And you know, all of these alarms work the exact same way, except the number one alarm, um, whoops, the number one alarm, if you press the adjust button, you can activate the snooze feature on that one. So now the alarm's turned on. 
And there's a separate indicator for each one of these alarms, which is kind of cool for this watch. Um, and there now the snooze is uh, also turned on for this number one alarm. Now if we'll go to the number two alarm, you can see the indicator for number two, and there is no snooze feature available for the number two, three, four, five. Okay, and if you press the start stop button and hold it, it's it's a alarm test feature. The beep is uh, I guess about as loud as Casio watches get, which isn't really all that loud. If it's under your pillow and you're sleeping, you might not hear it. Let's look at the 24-hour countdown timer. It's the second mode. It's currently running, so I'll stop it and then press the adjust button to reset it. So when it's at zero, that's the same as 24 hours. So if you start it, it'll start, count, start the countdown from 24 hours. Uh, that's the maximum setting that you can have. Uh, if you press and hold the adjust button, you go into the settings so you can set the hours and the minutes and you cannot set the seconds. Now it does have an auto repeat feature. So if you hold, press and hold the adjust so that the digits are flashing and then press the light button, you can see the indicator here, auto repeat. And what that means is when it counts down, it gets to zero, the alarm will sound for 10 seconds. Uh, it immediately, it instantly starts counting down again um, from the original set time. Now, if you don't have auto repeat activated, uh, so for instance, with this setting, it'll count one minute, uh, I should say one hour and one minute, it will count down to zero, the alarm will sound for 10 seconds, and it'll reset to one hour and one minute, but it will not start counting down. It just remembers the time that you had it set for. Now let's take a look at the 24 hour, one one hundredth of a second stopwatch. It's the third mode. It's Standard Casio stopwatch fair. You got hundreds of a second up here, seconds, minutes, hours. Um, it'll count up to 24 hours and then start over again. Um, you can stop it and then reset using the adjust button. You can also start it and then hit the adjust button for a split time. So it just freezes the display and the stopwatch keeps running in the background. And then when you press adjust again, it'll show you it shows you where the current elapsed time is. If you want to do a first and second place finish, you do you press the adjust button for first place, and then press the start stop button for second place. So now you see your first place time still on the screen. And then when you press the adjust button, you see the second place time. And then when you press the adjust button again, it resets it to zero. So, yeah, typical standard Casio 24-hour, 1 one-hundredth of a second stopwatch. It doesn't have auto start or any extra features like target or whatever. Now let's take a look at the final mode, the dual time mode. Pretty simple. Um, unfortunately, it does not show your home time on the screen as well as the dual time but it will stay in dual time mode when you when you set it here. It will not automatically return to timekeeping after X number of minutes have passed by. So you just press and hold the adjust button and you can set the hours for whatever you want and you can set the minutes for whatever you want. Um, the seconds stay locked with your home time. Those are not adjustable. Okay, so in conclusion, should you buy this watch? Uh, what do I think about the watch? Um, I think it's feature rich. And if you're a Casio loyalist and you really want a countdown timer and you really don't want to spend more than $15, then this might be the right, right uh, Casio wristwatch for you. It is kind of cool that it has separate indicators for each one of the alarms. You know, if your eyesight's good enough to actually see those, but it, it does have them. Um, it has a 10-year battery. However, 
it's very rare that anyone can have this watch survive 10 years. Typically the straps break or they get torn out, a lug breaks, or the face gets, the crystal gets all scratched up so much that people just stop wearing it. You know, they just decide that, oh, it's time for a new watch. So the battery will, will probably outlive the actual watch itself. Um, otherwise, uh, the negatives are, to me, you know, the vertically elongated shape kind of makes it look rather feminine, like a, like a woman's watch. Um, the darkness of the LCD, I'm not sure what that, what causes that, but it makes it a little harder to read. Um, I recommend electroluminescent over the LED, um, backlight. I would, I would suggest, you know, this for most every other aspect, um, you know, it's 100 meter water resist, so you can go swimming and not have to worry. Uh, the digits are a little bit bigger. Um, the light seems to work a little bit better. The readability is better because of that white uh, LCD. But on the negative side, it only has a single alarm. It is multifunction, but it's just one alarm. Um, and it does not have a countdown timer. It does have dual time, and it shows you your home time down at the bottom as well, so you can see both at the same time. Uh, so, and it looks a little more masculine with, with the shape of it. But, yeah, this is a feature-rich watch in terms of functionality, but not so much in, in other aspects. So that's my two cents. Um, hope you enjoyed this video, and um, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing if you do, and um, I'll see you in the next watch review.